Uh, today I'll be talking about um, a, a drug program we've been working on first initially in the preclinical setting in the laboratory and now moving into clinical phase one, which is a small molecule uh, program targeting a, a cancer molecule that has been involved and been, been demonstrated to involved in virtually every cancer uh, that we've looked at and others as well has have investigated. Uh, the talk today is going to sort of update uh, folks on where we are in the clinical uh, phase of one study, which is a, a single agent, using it as a single agent in uh, cancer patients who have solid tumors uh, that have failed all other therapies. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about how uh, our prospects for our agent to be used in combination with a very important advance in, in cancer therapy, which has been sort of termed immune checkpoint blockade inhibitors. These are monoclonal antibodies that unleash the immune response and allow it to, the T cells to basically kill the tumor where in, in prior to the treatment they've been kind of quiescent or anesthetized, if you will, and this activates them. That has, uh, that form of therapy, the immune checkpoint blockade inhibitor therapy has really advanced therapies, or advanced outcomes, particularly in melanoma and some other solid tumors, but there's still a good number of patients with, who haven't, don't respond to those alone, and also a whole a lot of other patients with different types of tumors that have not been very responsive to those therapies. We're looking to see if our agent that targets STAT3 uh, that I've talked about would be a benefit when combined with those immune checkpoint inhibitors. Ah, good, very good question. STAT3, Stat um, this is a pro program that began in my lab around 25 years ago. And, and we began looking at STAT3 back then because it was a major master regulator of events within the cell after the cell made contact with a variety of very important peptide hormones. Um, most, most important probably be, being interleukin-6, which is essentially the hormone that is, circulates quickly upon any injury that an individual or an animal s sustains, be it uh, trauma, be it um, infectious diseases, uh, be it uh, burns. And that a signal that is sent out from the local site, which is interleukin-6, essentially tells the body to um, sort of hold on and perhaps re-channel your energies towards uh, maintaining the status quo, um, including fever, uh, huddling behavior, as well as telling the tissues to stay alive for the short term. Now, we were very, and, and, and also it, it stimulates the, uh, the, um, the body, particularly the bone marrow, to produce inflammatory cells that get recruited and contain infection, because these are damaged areas in case of microbes that are actually causing infection. And the, and the white cells that get recruited because of this molecule being activated serve to either overcome the infection or prevent infection. Now, it turns out that in, you know, in nature, some of the things that nature builds for us to protect ourselves, if sustained, cause difficulties. And in this case, uh, when STAT3 is persistently activated after the acute injury is over, and the injury for some reason persists, be it continuous alcohol use, which inflames the liver, be it even obesity now, which inflames various tissues, including the, t the liver, that molecule now causes problems. It, in this case, it causes cancer if sustained activation occurs over a long period of time. So that's where we got involved is trying to target it, not in that acute area or in period of time when it's really benefiting the host, but rather when it's re persistently activated and actually causing cancer or inflammation, chronic inflammation or fibrosis of the organ. And we, we developed uh, these small molecules to sort of turn it off in very complex diseases where, and we learned that we could turn it off with these small molecules in animal models and of course then it became not a very uh, brilliant leap to say we can confirm or can uh, essentially change or convert those small molecules into drugs and that's where we're kind of in the process of doing. It's called TTI-101, 
and that's an abbreviation that stands for Tavardi Therapeutics Incorporated, drug number 101, and we have a second drug, 102, that's in the pipeline. Well, so far, we, we have been able to show that in virtually every um, preclinical animal model of cancer, we can show single agent efficacy. We can reverse the progression of the tumor and in some cases cause cure of the animal with the tumor. Um, and in our phase one clinical trial, we've shown that the, the drug now is very safe. It's, we're through dose level three in a phase one study. Generally, phase one studies have essentially uh, amplifying or increasing doses to find out what the safe level is and we're looking to go to dose level five. So far we're at dose level three. <clears throat> we've treated 10 patients that are evaluable through dose level three and we've demonstrated that <clears throat> five of those 10 have actually either had, have had benefit, either stable disease or in one case a partial response with 40% shrinkage of their liver cancer for 12 months. Um, so, so far, it's looking very promising, but it's still very early in, in the process of getting to an actual drug uh, application approval. I, I, actually, yes, when we started the study, we enrolled any patients with a solid tumor of any type uh, that had failed all standard care. Uh, what we're finding, though, in, is from that patient with hepatocellular carcinoma, and even from our preclinical modeling, is perhaps the most, um, potentially most responsive tumor will be liver cancers. Um, and, and so we're, as a young, small company, we're looking to sort of move it uh, ahead for an indication in liver cancer first, and that's our fir first target at this point in time. Yes, actually, we have ideas, and, and that is that inflammatory and fibrotic response that I talked about that occurs when you have persistent activation of this molecule, STAT3. Well, that's a kind of a standard uh, substrate, if you will, in the liver of patients go on to develop hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. And so we think, in fact, our uh, uh, evidence in the preclinical model suggests that we actually not only can slow the tumor growth down, in fact, arrest the tumor growth in animal models, but we also can reverse the fibrosis and reverse the inflammation. And so we think we're hitting the liver cancer at all stages of its pre-development as well as in its development. And, and so therefore, we kind of have maybe multiple shots on goal, if you will, in that particular cancer system. And maybe that's why we're seeing a benefit there first. But again, conjecture at this point because we only have a, one patient so far that has had that response. Although we had the other of the three patients with hepatocellular carcinoma that we've treated, the other one had stable disease and one had progression. So we'll, that's where we're sort of aiming for our, our efforts right at this point. So uh, if we were able to uh, you know, finish the phase one, and which I think we are on track to do, and determine what the safe dose in a patient is, we will do an expanded cohort of patients in, with, the, with hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. And that will give us more confidence that that one patient or maybe two patients that we saw a positive signal in actually represents a, a, a true biological phenomenon that we can we could uh, basically encourage the FDA to approve or to move forward with a phase three trial, which would really establish with a robust sampling of patients that our agent actually works. The rationale for using an, uh, a small molecule that targets STAT3, in addition, in addition to immune checkpoint, which is a, a second direction we will be moving, it makes sense because STAT3 is very important in the cellular environment of the tumor for causing the immune response to also be asleep at the switch, if you will. So it, it, but it will activate the immune system at the site of the tumor in a different way than immune checkpoint therapy uh, will do. So I guess the, the, the tr truly um, uh, sort of revolutionary finding that these immune checkpoint blockade inhibitors work in cancer was that so many patients of certain types have this immune system that's sleeping. And so the concept of waking up the immune system with the checkpoint inhibitors makes great sense. But we're arguing perhaps, and we'll see, 
is that there are more ways to wake up the immune system, including targeting STAT3 in those cells around the tumor to make them better able to fight the cancer. Thank <music> you.